I know from the experience of 1933 that it worked. I have taught that law to everyone who will listen to them. Many will listen, yes, many have proved it, but we are creatures of habit. And when all day long, and every moment of time, reason is dictating, we tend to go back to what reason dictates, and what the senses dictate. But the being who is speaking in you is the Lord Jesus Christ, and is your own wonderful human imagination. So he is telling you, be not afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. For in my Father's house there are many mansions. Mansions means states of consciousness. And these are all for the purpose of satisfying the hunger of a man. I hungered for Barbados. It was a state to satisfy that hunger. The day will come there will be a hunger that not a thing in this world can satisfy but an experience of God. That's a state of consciousness. There is a hunger for money that nothing can satisfy but money. There is a hunger for fame and nothing but fame. Trivial as it is, not a thing will satisfy it but fame as you understand fame. So these are all states. So you enter into the state of the hunger and view the world from it and satisfy your hunger. For if you are now known, as you want to be known, then the hunger to be known is satisfied. If you want to be anything, and then you view the world from that state, and the world view, although subjective, confirms what you are actually seeing and experiencing subjectively, well then your hunger has been satisfied. Now, having done it, in my own case, a bridge of incident was built without my conscious reasoning mind. I didn't write my brother's letter. I didn't buy the $50 draft. I didn't notify the shipping company to issue a ticket to me. All that came by mail. He was influenced 2,000 miles away by my assumption. I dared to appropriate subjectively my objective hope. So take your hope, your objective hope and then appropriate it subjectively and sleep in it as though it were true. If you dare to sleep in it as though it is actually true, in a way you do not know, that bridge of incident will occur and you will be compelled to walk across that bridge to the fulfillment of the subjective appropriation. But when you get to the end, it is now the fulfillment of the objective hope. This is what this night I would share with you. I tell it from experience. And then from then on, when I have found a crisis in my life, I applied it. I do not live by every second of time, because I am fairly satisfied with the life I live. And so there is no need for constant change in my life. But there are moments in the lives of all of us where we reach a crisis. And then you have to take action if you know who Christ is. For bear in mind, by him all things were made. And without him was not anything made that was made. So do not become so completely anchored to the outer garment that you think is yourself. It's only a garment. And forget the inner man, the imaginative man, who is the immortal you. The imaginative man is God himself. And the day will come that he will be born. For this whole vast drama, I could break it into three patterns. Innocent, experience, imagination. And when you reach that stage, the first stage of imagination, you're going towards the end. For we came out of the world of experience, into a world, I mean the world of innocence, into the world of experience. I move toward an awakening imagination, which is God himself. So we are told all things are possible to God. Then we are told all, possible, all things are possible to him who believes. So the 19th chapter of Matthew tells us, with God all things are possible. 
The ninth chapter of Mark tells us all things are possible to him who believes. So he equates God with a man who can believe. You can't get away from that equation. If all things are possible to God and all things are possible to the one who believes, then he equates the one who believes with God. Now I know the difference between thinking from my wish fulfilled and thinking of it. I am always thinking from where I am and of where I am not. Right now I am thinking from this room and of my home where my wife is now. But this room is more real now than where she is because I am thinking from here and I'm thinking of her. The secret is thinking from. When you enter into a state and think from it, you give it all the tones of reality. You give it all the sensory vividness that you can muster. And then when you open your eyes and you break the spell, you think, now what have I done? That was all imagination, the world would say. That's all it leads to, for imagination is God. You set in motion a reality. And you do not have now to devise the means which will be employed to move you from where you are physically to where you are in imagination. So listen to the words carefully. And now I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself. But where I am, there you shall be also. He is speaking to this garment. This garment can't go. You put it on a chair, put it on a bed, throw it on the floor. But he, the inner man, can be any place in this world. I'm viewing the world from where he is in imagination, which is reality. He returns to the garment that he left behind. And he takes it to himself. So I will return, having gone and prepared the place, I will return and take you to myself. But where I am, where? In consciousness, in my imagination, which is the only reality, there ye shall be also. So I went into Barbados in my imagination, and that was Christ. But I left the little garment that I wore on 75th Street in New York City. Then I returned the next morning and took it up. All right, six weeks passed by, and seemingly nothing happened. But it came with sudden shockingness. I was out of the nowhere, the letter, under my door. Because in those days, what on earth would you be getting up early when there were 17 odd million unemployed and I was a dancer? Who wanted a dancer? When they couldn't eat, how could they pay to go to see a dancer? If I could find a job in a restaurant dancing for nothing but just for the food, I'd have taken it. People who are not my age have no idea of the depression of those days. We speak of a recession today. There are six million unemployed with 204 million in our country. Or there were 17 odd million, and that was a, not quite the true figure. And we only had 120 odd million. If you knew no New York City, there's a place called Gimbel's, and Gimbel's moves all the way through to Penn Station. And the hallway walking through from Gimbel's to Penn Station would be from there to about here. I have seen men seven deep, all the way sleeping at night, no place to go. At least they had a seizure for them. That's where they slept. They slept all over the place, and what they could bathe or eat out, that's what they got. He had no social security in those days. No.